Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to Hardware 3D Tutorial 8. Today we're going to look at the design and implementation of a little uh, keyboard component system. So, I got a diagram here. It's a basic uh, client server setup. Uh, that doesn't just apply to networking, by the way. We use that for all sorts of things in software engineering. Uh, in this case, the client is going to be our game logic, and the server is going to be our uh, window system. So, our window system encapsulates all the ideas of uh, the Win API window, and that includes things like uh, keyboard input and mouse input, because as I've demonstrated before, those come in as Windows messages. And uh, we want the client uh, software to be able to access information about that input. Specifically, we would like it for the keyboard to get the state of what keys are currently being pressed at any given time, and also to pull off um, individual keyboard events, key up and key down events, from a, uh, from a queue. And this is a good target for kind of uh, composition. Instead of making one giant monolithic window class that handles all of that stuff, we can uh, break out that functionality into an individual keyboard class, and the keyboard object will then be embedded in our window. It's better organization, it's better modularity. Now, there's going to be two sides to this keyboard uh, object here, or class, whatever you want to say. Uh, you've got the interface that faces the window, and then you've got the interface that is going to face the client. Now, the window facing interface is going to be used by the window to basically take those uh, Windows events and update the state of our keyboard object. So, you know, there's going to be, you know, basically one function here for each type of event. You got the key down, the key up event, and the car event. And then on the client side here, you've got, you know, functions to, you would, you would do key is pressed and you would pass in a key code, you know, VK underscore enter and it would return true if the enter key is currently being pressed and then you have functions like read car where you would be able to pull off an event object from a queue that is encapsulated in the keyboard so the keyboard has two main types of data it's got the state which holds the state of all the keys that's just going to be a bit field and then it has uh, cues for the types of events that can be queued there's two types key events and car events all right, let's take a look at the code now. First change I made, big commit here, where I added the keyboard class. So I've added two files here, keyboard.h and keyboard.cpp. Let's look at keyboard.h. That is going to define the, uh, the keyboard class. Uh, lots of stuff here. I've got a friend declaration. Talk about that in a little bit. I've got an internal class here, event. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little later. Let's look at the overall interface. We've got uh, default construction, delete the copy and uh, copy assignment. Don't need that stuff. So we've got our key event functions here. Key is pressed, read key, key is empty, flush key. Key is pressed is your, your very basic interface here. You can pass it a key code and it will tell you whether that key is currently being pressed. Read key will pull an event off of the event queue. Uh, key is empty will check to see if there is any event in the event queue and flush key will flush that queue. Although I probably should call it uh, clear key instead of flush key, but whatever, it doesn't matter. You get the idea, it clears out the queue. And the same idea is for the car events here. Uh, except there is no, uh, there's no reading this, the key state for car because that doesn't make any sense. Car events are used for text input, so it's a stream of characters. Uh, so you just want to pull those characters off of the queue. So there's read car, car is empty, flush car. And then flush is, uh, it's for both of them. So if you call flush, it'll flush both of these queues together. And there's some functions here to control auto repeat, and we'll talk about that a little later. Now, on the private side, these functions here are used by uh, window. So they're not part of the public interface. The client cannot use them. And the way we implement that is we make window a friend of keyboard. In that way, we can expose these functions to uh, window without having them exposed to the outside world. And that's, that's a little nicer for me. Of course, this has the side effect of also exposing all of the internals of the class to window. But I can kind of justify it in this case because when you think about it, keyboard is really just an extension of the window class. So it actually makes a lot of sense architecturally to be able to have this as a friend of window. 
But anyways, these uh, these methods, these functions are called when certain Windows messages are received. So when you get a key press message, you call this one, key release, you call this one, car, you'll call this one. Clear state will actually just clear this bit set that holds all the key states. Um, so that'll that'll become useful a little later. I will talk about that and trim buffer. We we'll give we give the buffers a uh, maximum size. I give it. I set it to sixteen. Uh, and trim buffer just if the size gets over sixteen, it will remove items from the queue until the buffer is back down to sixteen. Now these key events and uh, stuff like key is pressed, they use something called a key code. So if we look at the WM key down message, we see again W param gives us the virtual key code of the key that was pressed. And we can look here, get a list of virtual key codes, and you'll notice that they are all in the range of one byte. So they don't exceed one byte. The, the top one is FE. So that is the reason why our, our bit set here key states, we can set the size to 256 because that's how many um, maximum amount of virtual key codes that we can have. In this bit set, it just packs those 200 and basically packs 256 bools into single bits and allows us to access them by index. Q is just your standard first in first out Q. So you add things to the back of the Q, you pull things off the front. All right, enough of that. Let's take a look at the actual implementation here. Uh, so to check if key is pressed, it's pretty simple. You just return key states at key code, right? Uh, because the key code is just an index into this bit set. Uh, read key. First, we check to see the if there's anything on the uh, the queue, the key buffer. If so, we remove we we copy the first thing in the queue, and then we pop that off. Now. This uses a keyboard event. I kind of I kind of missed that, but let's go back to it quickly. So the event class uh, it has a basic uh, interface. You've got three types of events. You got a press event, a release event, and then an in invalid event. Uh, so you for every event, it's got a type, and it has it stores the code of the key that is involved in the event. Uh, so the default constructor for this sets it to invalid type. Uh, but if you specify a type and a code, you will construct an event based on that. This should this should also be no except. Just forgot to put that in there. Uh, and then you can check to see is the you know is the event a press event? Is it a release? Is it invalid? And you can get the key code from that. So it's a very simpler simple interface there. So if we go back to this, we can see that if we have any uh, any events in the queue, copy the event pop it off the queue, which is to say dequeue it, and then return that event. But if there is nothing in the queue, just return a default constructed event, which will return an invalid event. And then you can just, you can check to see if the queue is empty, which you should probably do, instead of, you know, popping off invalid events. And the same idea for the character queue. You can um, pull a character off the queue and return that, but if there's nothing in the queue, it's just going to return zero. So for this one, um, you should probably, you know, make sure you check to see if car is empty. Don't just pull off zeros and try to do something with them. Uh, what else? You can check to see if that queue is empty. You can flush the key buffer, which just uh, basically default constructs a new queue and replaces the current one with that one. Same thing for flush car. And flush just flushes both of those. Pretty simple. Enable auto repeat. There is a member variable bool auto repeat enabled this one enable will set it to true disable set it to false auto repeat is enable will get you that state we'll talk about these guys a little bit later um, now this is the private side this is what the windows api uses or not the windows api our window class uses and it's it's pretty simple on key pressed these on events for key, on key pressed and on key released, they update both the key state and the key buffer. So when on a key pressed, it's going to set the key state for that code to true, indicating that it is being pressed. It's currently down. And it will also push an event onto the buffer. The event type is press, and then the key code is the code that we received. And we call trim buffer after that, just in case the buffer goes oversized, it'll remove uh, the old thing from the buffer. And the same idea for key released. And on car, 
again we yeah we push onto there and then we trim there is no state for car so we just push onto the uh, queue and clear state just resets the key states uh, bit set it's got a function called reset and trim buffer is just a nice little uh, it's a template class and then the reason I template it is so that it works on queue car and queue event so it'll work on both of our queues and all it does is check to see if this while the size is greater than our uh, maximum allowed size it pops off of the buffer and there you have it there's the implementation of the entire keyboard component uh, now important part is actually getting uh, actually handling the windows messages and getting that information into our component so we go into well, what do we change in windows.h well we include keyboard.h pretty important and we also add keyboard as an embedded object and i make it public and that allows me to access it uh, just you know window.keyboard.key is pressed or whatever i like that syntax so i keep it like this and then in window.cpp we add some stuff to handle keyboard messages so on key down we call on key pressed on key up we call on key released on car we call on car so that um, doing putting this stuff encapsulated in the uh, in the keyboard class makes our message handling procedure nice and clean which is good because we're going to be handling quite a few messages so we don't want to junk this up with a whole bunch of logic keep the logic a factor that out into different components nice that's nice organization right there and as a simple test here in win main in our message pump what i do is after we dispatch the message i will check to see i'll check window keyboard key is pressed space and if the space bar is being pressed, I will pop up a message box. And if we run that, we get the donkey fart box. If I press a bunch of keys, nothing happens. But if I press space, I get my message. And if I press OK, I get another message and another one and another one. Note that I'm not pressing any keys on the keyboard. What, what happened? Well, here's something interesting. If I focus to this window, then I press space again. Then I focus back to this one and then I press OK. It doesn't pop up another window. So that's weird, right? Well, the reason why that happens is because what hap well, what happens here? You press a key, key state changes for space, goes to true. Uh, then in here, you pop up a message box. Message box pops up. The window focus changes to the message box. So now your window doesn't have focus. So when you release the space key, the, the key up message goes to the message box, doesn't go to your window. So your window is stuck in the key down state, and that's not good. So how do we fix this? What we want to do is we want to clear the key state for all keys when we lose focus, because we don't want zombie key presses hanging on doing weird shit after, you know, focus changed to a different window. So the way we do that is very simple. We have a, there's a window message called WM kill focus. And when we receive that message, all we want to do is do keyboard.clearState. And that's why I added the clear state function was to handle this message. And we see here now I can press space, get my uh, message box, close it, and it does not pop up again. Beautiful. I can get it again if I press space. No problem. Now another problem that you're going to get um, that you might not want is auto repeat. So when you're playing a game and you're holding, you know, WASD or you're holding some other key, uh, what Windows will do normally is it will, after you hold it for a certain amount of time, it will start generating tons of WM key down messages. And that's, I mean, you've, we've all experienced that. You hold down a key and it'll just start repeating that key. Uh, but for games, you often don't want that behavior. Now, what we can do is, well, let's take a look at the documentation for key down. So if we look at LPRM, it has a whole bunch of information here, and they're all packed into these bits. There's a bunch of them. Uh, now, now bit 30 is the bit that we want to use to check for auto-repeat. It doesn't actually say it here in so many words, but logically, the value is 1 if the key is down before the message is sent, or 0 if the key is up. So, the idea being here, that in an auto-repeat sequence, the first time it is sent, the key was up, so it'll be zero. But after that, every auto repeat uh, message after that, the value will be one because the key was down before the message was sent. Uh, so all we gotta do is check bit 30. 
And that's what we're doing here. We go L per M and we mask it with, this is bit 30, by the way. And we want it to be false. So if this is false, or if we allow auto repeat, only then do we process on key pressed. Otherwise, we just ignore it. And this will allow us to selectively filter auto repeat key events. Notice that we're not going to filter for on car because on car, you only really use this one for uh, text input when you're typing into, let's say, a text box or something. Uh, and in that case, you probably do want auto repeat, or at least you want the user to be able to choose what they want. And they can do that through operating system settings. So you shouldn't force that on them. But for the, uh, the key event stuff, there's definitely you want to be able to disable that. All right, now there's one final issue that we've got to uh, take a look at before we can put a close to this keyboard business. So let's try to handle or to check the state of the alt key on the keyboard. Now, first thing we'll notice is if we type VK underscore alt, uh, the compiler is going to give us a nice angry squiggly for that because that's not a VK code. The, the code for alt is VK menu, which makes probably about as much sense to you as it does to me. But anyways, that is definitely the one for alt. But if we try it, I don't know if you can hear that, but I am madly pressing the alt key. I press the space key by accident. I'm madly pressing the alt key. Nothing is happening. So what gives? Well, here we see Windows message key down posted to a window when a non-system key is pressed. And it just so happens that Alt and I think also F10 are system keys. So you will not get the Alt key down message if you only uh, listen for WM key down. What an amazing design. Great. So how do we solve this? Well, the solution is pretty simple, luckily. And all we got to do is also handle uh, WM Siski down messages. Uh, I have it on good authority that Siski means something in Russian. I can't exactly remember what. I think it has something to do with with fruits or melons. I, anyways, um, Siski down. In that will get us our alt key presses as well as other system keys like I believe F10. And the uh, the actual format of this message is pretty much the same as a normal key down. So we can actually use the exact same logic for both messages. We can use the uh, the fall through um, behavior of C++ switches. And we can just have both of these messages resolve to the same code here. Nice and clean solution. Beautiful. And we run that, we press Alt, and we get a nice, beautiful text box message box, whatever. It's good. It works. We're done. So that's the architecture and the implementation of our keyboard component and a little, a couple of just quick examples of how it's used. We'll be using it a lot more later on once we actually get into rendering and we want to control our tests. But that's going to be it for today. In the next video, we're going to basically do the same thing, but for mouse input. And mouse has its own little quirks that we'll have to deal with as well. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more Hardware 3D.